Hello everyone. So now let's talk about controlling Kali services. So there's a few different ways that we can control the services and what I mean by that is let's say for example that we wanted to run a web server. Well the service for that is called Apache 2 and if we remember our IF config here let's see our IF config. Okay so this is our IP address here. I'm just going to copy it and what I want to do is I want to go out to Firefox really quick and we're just going to do a proof of concept here. Let's open Firefox. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. And what I want to do is just paste and enter in this IP address. Okay, so that should go to port 80 and should go to a web server if I'm running a web server. For example, if we say service Apache 2 start and then we go back into our Firefox, now we have Apache 2 running. So this is what I mean by having a service running. It's control L clears your screen, so I'm just going to clear the screen here. Now if I wanted to stop the service, I could as well. If you want to see a list of commands, you could say service Apache 2 enter and then you would have the different commands here. Usually we're just going to use start, stop, and restart. So we're going to need to use Apache when we're hosting files and trying to host you know, malicious shells, uh, malicious web pages, etc. So it's good for us to have Apache turned on permanently. The thing about the service command is the service command turns on a service at that given time. It does not keep it for you when you restart your computer. So if we were to restart, we would not have a web server running. So a way to do that is actually with the systemctl command. So we could type in systemctl and then we have enable or we have disable if we want a service to not run. So we could say enable Apache 2 and now Apache 2 is running um, on systemctl, meaning that when we reload our computer, reboot anything, Apache 2 will always be running. We will always be running web server. There are two other ones I want you to turn on. That is SSH. That way we can SSH to other machines, attempt brute force attacks, etc. And I want you to turn on PostgreSQL. Okay, so PostgreSQL is mainly a, it's a SQL database that is mainly used for Metasploit. We're not going to get into Metasploit now. Uh, that's going to come much later. However, it is important that you know that you need it enabled uh, for Metasploit to run. So you might as well have it enabled on boot as opposed to having to turn it on before you turn on Metasploit or let Metasploit turn it on for you. And it takes uh, quite a bit more time. So that's it. These are the three services that are critical. Uh, later on, if we run into more services, we'll turn them on as we go. But these are the, the important three. So just make sure that you come away from this understanding how to turn off and on a service and how to turn off and on a service on system boot. There are other methods, but these are the easiest ones. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to start talking about narrowing down results. So we're going to learn about grep, cut, and sed. Um, and use those eventually with our scripting language. So I will see you in the next video.